Hello and welcome everybody to Bish's RV. Josh the RV Nerd here actually down at the Cherokee What's In Store for 24 display. And I found something a little bit different over here. This is the 13BC. And in case you're trying to discern that model number, uh, the Cherokee group, whoever helps design the floor plane, they get their initials put on it. So someone whose initials were BC helped build this one right here. And it's a little bit different. It does not have a normal full-time bed. And what I think is really interesting about this is there's a segment of the RV industry that people forget exists. They talk about bunk houses and families. They talk about couples camping, but nobody really builds stuff for solo campers. And this could be a couples model, but I think that this is maybe best fit for a solo traveler, which is something we don't talk about a lot in the RV industry, but there's plenty of them out there. Um, actually, majority of women uh, comprise solo travels, uh, or majority of solar travelers are women. So interesting factoid there. This thing is only like barely 18 foot long and change. It's uh, about 3,100, 3,200 pounds dry empty weight. Um, and I tell you what, it's something you don't need a big giant truck. You got that mid-sized tow package vehicle. This would be a very comfortable tower and goer, but it's still, uh, it's, it's, this is the step above their new Wolf Den entry level. This is a full Wolf Pup. So you're still getting things like the uh, the better stabilizer jacks, the rear camera, the, the mount for the roof access ladder, the factory solar package. But this one, what's cool is your, your living area can become your sleeping area. So if you're alone, you may not even need to fold both benches down. You might be able to get away with leaving just one bench down and having a bed and a sofa. Um, you know, you, this could be, I can think of a lot of different ways. How would you use this sucker? Is it crazy? Is it awesome? I don't know, but we're going to show you what it does and what it don't do. And if you appreciate that kind of insight, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get in there. And let me know what you think about this one. I have a suspicion it's either going to be sink or swim, love or hate. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people who are only lukewarm on one of these. Now, one of the cool things, like if it's just you and the old doggo or whatever, we're carpetless, we're ventless, we're easy cleaning, we're pet friendly. And I tell you, one of the first things I would do is I would get rid of that uh, knee knocker dinette. And I know I talk about this a lot, but especially in this model, I would really like to have that table uh, able to be floaty, you know, able to kind of uh, shift around a little bit. What's interesting here, though, is how, like, let me actually scan you down a little bit. It's like, I don't know, uh, a two adult, one kid sofa on either side or comfortably two adults, but it's really got a dining table kind of best fit for two people. It's a little bit tight otherwise. What is also interesting is I don't really look at a lot of wolf pup models and think, man, I really hope it has an awesome entertainment center. But if you're sitting here on the sofa and you do decide to add a TV to that sucker, this is about the best entertainment center I think I've ever seen in a wolf pup. Now, it doesn't have massive campsite windows, but you got the window in the door and the breeze window over the uh, the sofa. It's a cross breeze window, by the way, uh, which is one of my favorite songs. A lot of people think uh, it's Jukebox Hero, but it's actually cross breeze windows. That's just uh, one of those misheard lyrics, you know, kind of like there's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> um, you'll find they're very good about household and USB outlets. Sorry if I got a little close there. I kind of it's hot and I got a little dizzy. I think I need to go get hydrated. I'm not sure, but we're going to keep on rolling for now. We are still six and a half foot tall. And, uh, you know, at my height, I'm a little bit over six foot. That means I can still walk straight under that 13,500 BTU air conditioner in this little box and be fine. That is a lot of cooling power for this little sucker, by the way. Um, now, in our previous little floor plan in a flash, I kind of showed you how all this works, but I want to give you uh, another look here, kind of doing a little twist and shout, change the sofas around, you know, the left side, the right side, they could lay down individually. They don't necessarily have to lay down together. Uh, you can use it like just a wide open lounge in the middle. Obviously, you can use it like one big giant m -m -m mega bed, but that is also one of the interesting things. If you don't care about the sofa, there's a lot of people who are like, I don't need an RV with seating inside of it. I need an RV that I can sit, eat, and shower in. And that's what this could be. You could just ignore the fact that those are sofas and you could just lay a big, giant, thick residential mattress on there and a 60 by 80 True Queen bed will fit on top of that thing. And what's interesting about that, if you do that, that would actually create this almost like little under the sofa kind of tunnel storage down there depending on what you wanted to do with it, you know? I could also see while you're going down the road, uh, I don't know, find a place to stow that table somewhere else. Like if you, if you shove the tabletop under that mattress, it'll tend to hold well. And you could have yourself like a, 
I don't know, like in a, a, a bike or e-bike kind of loading space here. Uh, my folding e-bike, by the way, I found out like a big giant like Rubbermaid tote, like almost 42 gallon big suckers, makes it a lot easier to heave ho around the camper. And I love what they did here. Since they don't have struts for overhead cabinets, they didn't make the doors flip up. They just made them swing open, which makes so much more sense to me. And did you notice the nice little magnet latches that they're using on there? Just smart, clean hardware, you know? Now, over here, this is interesting. This is a single point inverter brick, basically. So if you activate it and you're on battery power, that white outlet out there can be uh, powered off the battery. Now there's also household, or pardon me, USB plugs, both type A and C built onto that as well. Although USB plugs typically will work just off the battery, no sweat. Those are a 12 volt thing, not a uh, 110 thing. Um, over here in the kitchen, the kitchen is fairly simple. It is fairly basic. This floor plan really feels like if I was ever going to add a countertop extension leaf, this would be the model to do it right here. That's just, you know, if you ask me. Although, this could also be a really nice wastebasket space because uh, if you notice over here, they put shelving under the refrigerator. So you don't really have the option of using that uh for for wastebasket space so you know at least they kind of gave us a little bit of a way around it now they still stuck with that big 10 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge actually wolf pup i think was the first single axle camper to use a full size fridge by default and a lot of other brands have kind of since followed suit um now as we uh kind of if i pivot my way around i think we already kind of saw over here again kind of the view of the entertainment center but just to kind of complete the 360 visual as we slide back into the bathroom now i don't think this rv is toilet tv certified i don't think you can watch tv from the toilet but hey that's what phones are for right <laughs> it is super fluffy friendly though i found tons of space around that toilet you know if you are a little bit larger than the average bear, you're going to do just fine there. Now, they're uh, in the Wolf Pup series, they use the Cherokee Shub, as I like to call it. Not quite a shower, not quite a tub. And so that you don't necessarily have to wash your bathroom hands uh, in the kitchen sink, they do still have this little corner sink over here, which does have its own drain, by the way. Like, if you wash your hands, you're not going to get, like, wet toes. <laughs> That's the, uh, the little plastic cover uh, to help control the... What do I want to say? Antifreeze that comes on this thing from the factory. Although, obviously, you notice somebody has slipped that off. Now, it seems like the Wolf Pups are... They, they have this happen constantly. If you're my height, you might notice I don't fit in that shower too awful well. It just does... It, it is not kind of a person of my size and stature. If you're a little more, we'll say, gravity-friendly, like my wife, a little bit uh, lower to the ground, a little lower center of gravity, well, you're going to do just fine in there. But that's the kind of stuff I like to point out in my videos to help you understand what you're getting and what you're not. Now, today we're looking at a standard series. Black Label is available on this. So the standard series Wolf Pup is one of the only members of the Cherokee group that actually does come with the four inch fart fan in the bathroom. But if you go Black Label on these, that is one of a lot of upgrades that you'll get. And that blank wall back there to me is just begging for a towel rod or two or a bunch of towel hooks like an octopus fight club or something like that i don't know that that kind of be my two cents now i'm traveling so i got my backpack with me and i kind of like to use that for size when i get the opportunity and showing you kind of all the storage space in here one thing you haven't really seen is any sort of hanging storage well that's what this space here in the bathroom can be uh, this, uh, you know, it can be pantry, it could be hanging storage, it could be a little bit of whatever you need, it could be a combination of those things. And this is a simple, easy, no slide camper. No slides means less weight, means less upkeep, less seals, less points for water to possibly penetrate. Water penetration, by the way, the nice salesy way of saying leaks. Leak is like a four letter word in the RV industry. And I'm told it's a four letter word outside of the RV industry, which should really tell you something right there. The other thing though, with simple, easy, no slides, it is in road mode all the time. This RV is excellent for what I call stealth mode camping, where if you do just, like some places don't want you to pull in overnight and open your slide outs. Well, some RVs you have to. Well, this one, if you're traveling, there's no slides. You can just pull in, close the door, deadbolt the door, lay down, you know, do what you gotta do very handy for you know random travel styles especially for the the folks who like to travel spontaneously which is something that's almost vanished from the rv industry i swear this could be a really cool uh couldn't decide if i want to say good or cool so it could be a ghoul option for you 
I swear. All right, so she's fairly tiny, but what does it take to tow it? Well, look at again at the weights and the measures there. Not a whole awful lot. This does not need a big vehicle to get towed around, uh, especially, you know, not just being single axle, not just being uh, a good lightweight category, but just the fact that it's not super long. It's not very big and intimidating to tow around you. We're going to talk about a little towing factor that changed recently, though, uh, a little bit later here as we go through the video. So you may notice the little diamond plate kind of mini skirt guard and the, uh, the more aggressive knobby style tires. That is what's known as the Adventure Package, which has actually become standard on all the Wolf Pups. Previously optional, now standard. More and more people were wanting better ground clearance and to get the sewer hookups up away from, you know, getting smashed and crashed. So they've, they've said, hey, we got a solution for that. We'll just standardize it. And eh, there you go. Now, it's interesting how they managed to pack all the big wolf puppy things on this little wolf pup camper, like your outside TV hookups, the outside speakers, about shoulder level on someone like me, a little over six foot. It does not have a full pass-through, but they still want to give you something for outside storage. So you can see over here under the, uh, the door side uh, sofa, you can get to the storage from the inside or outside. You know, it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. What is really nice on this little thing, because the kitchen inside is fairly small, you see that you still got that propane cooker hooker hanging down below there in case you want to do some grilling and chilling. Now, if there is any sort of background noise, uh, I do apologize. Down here at this display, I'm next to the food truck, which has uh, a uh, not quiet generator running, although I am, uh, uh, I'm getting the, the scent trail off of that thing and whatever they're cooking, I'm, I'm getting over there. Uh, Wiener Shack and Grill. Okay, I'm going to go to the Wiener Shack later and I'm going to get me some lunch. Uh, moving on from there, that is the real name of the food truck, by the way. Don't yell at me. Big, major change from last year. Last year, all wolf pups were seven foot wide. This year, they are all now seven and a half foot wide. And you may notice through the entirety of the Cherokee Travel Trailer family, they have somewhat blunted the nose off but what that's creating is that extra overhead cabinet storage and i don't know it still looks pretty decently radius to me it doesn't look like a big flat wall that being said no rv is really well aerodynamically optimized they are all basically rolling bricks uh anytime i hear someone talk about a nose cap that helps with aerodynamics i just roll my eyes because it's kind of garbage now uh over here we got the cherokee quick jack eight seconds up and down with a power drill is all this little thing takes right here. That is a really cool little feature. Now you're looking at a battery on this camper in this display, but one of the differences in the juice pack of the 24 season versus last year's 23 season is that it does not include a standard battery anymore. That is a major departure from what they had done previously. Uh, the reason being, what's the correct battery? Some people, like me, tend to park camp, and we don't need a fancy pants battery like lithium and stuff. Some people only camp out of the parks, and they need a fancy pants battery like lithium or whatever. Well, it's really hard to try to predict the correct battery for everybody, especially when there can be a lot of money wrapped up in that. So they've kind of let you sort of pick your own, uh, really going back to the classics in that way. I love the full hot, cold outside utility shower. You see the uh, tankless on-demand water heater over there, and Below that kitchen window, that black circle, is your black tank flush. Those are boring things to talk about, but a lot of little campers don't have those things. Wolf Pups are not the least expensive little camper. They are arguably in their class, some of the best equipped, however, and that adventure package really does a nice job of getting those sewer hookups up off the ground a little bit further. Now in the back here, we got that cargo travel rack rated for 200 pounds before the spare tire, so kind of keep that in mind. And even though it doesn't include it from the factory, it is prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder. And next to that, you see the uh, LCI Bluetooth InSight camera. So this comes with a backup camera built on it right from the factory. And if you look just over the nose of the RV, you see maybe just a little bit of a silver sliver right there in front of the air conditioner. That is the, uh, the solar panel. That is a 100 watt factory solar panel and they are using a charge controller that will allow you to expand on that uh, without necessarily needing to rewire everything, which I think is a really cool thing. Another cool thing, your nose skin. You see how it's not corrugated and wavy? That's because it is 67% thicker 
than the sidewall skin. So the whole no skin is basically stone guard. So let me know what you think of this new little mutant. Like, is this something the industry has been missing? Or are they just kind of reaching too far? You tell me, and I suppose the sales records will be the ultimate test. We'll see if she survives a couple years or not. Uh, until then, if you're kind of curious, if we have one in stock, you can check the link in the video description, or uh, if you're watching on TV, scan that QR code with your phone. If we have one in stock, it'll show you the pricing right there. And if we're sold out, contact our local teams, and we're happy to get you some figures. No sweat. You don't. We don't need your social security number just to get you a rough price on something. And when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.